Hi, I'm David Davis from Actual Tech Media. I'm excited to be joined by Srinity Vararachan, better known as Dr. V. He's also the CTO of Cloudistics. How are you doing? Thanks, David. Pleasure. Yeah, awesome. So today we're talking about network virtualization. Um, I mean, in traditional enterprise networks, you know, you have virtualization hosts. Those virtualization hosts have virtual switches connected to physical switches, and you have a whole network team, you know, who who learns to manage and, and monitor and troubleshoot uh, a complex network infrastructure. And when you go to deploy new applications, of course, there's a lot of turnup time related to the network. Um, there's you know tools like distributed switching that have tried to make the management a little bit easier, but there's still a lot of complexity. Um, and when you have new applications that need dedicated services like load balancing or DHCP or DNS or firewall, you know security features, there's a lot that has to be done you know in the background to make all that work. So I'm sure people are struggling out there with that network complexity. Um, and I'm excited to learn more about network virtualization and what the Cloudistics Ignite you know network virtualization can do. So, you know, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about how the traditional network compares to um, VMware's NSX solution, which uses VXLAN, and then how that compares to Cloudistics Ignite network virtualization. Absolutely. Thanks, David. And you're right. Um, networking is probably the most complex component of a data center infrastructure. We've had it for 30 years. It's always been the, the domain of the arcane, uh, and it will continue to be. Uh, it, it really is that complex underneath to get a, a worldwide network that has been set up, which is our internet, to talk to every component in there. So if I look at a typical traditional network, there are some design principles that go into it because the network connects everything in your infrastructure. It connects your storage, it connects your compute, it connects your virtualization. If the network goes down, it's like the highway system going down. There is no connectivity. Right. So as network engineers typically, or even network designers, uh, we are relatively very risk averse because the goal is to make sure the network never fails. Mm -hmm. So we build general purpose networks that connect everything, not necessarily best suited for any application, but will be reliable and will continue to operate. Now, what would you want in the ideal world? In the ideal world, you want a networking system where every application I deploy ends up with its own network. Then I can tailor security towards that application. I can even set up quality of service such that the application gets preferential treatment for traffic if business so determines that that should be the case. Right. To get that ideal world means I have to change my network many times a day, 10, 20, 30 times a day. And if I did that, my underlying network in a physical networking world would simply fail. Uh, some piece in there will not have uh, something called route convergence, you will end up losing connectivity to machines. And what this results is, is in a flaky network with a lot of different services going down. So we can't do that in a physical world. Back in 2012, VMware originally started down this path of network virtualization saying, we have virtualized everything else. We have virtualized compute, we have virtualized servers, we have virtualized storage, but networking is still physical. And the idea behind network virtualization is, I should be able to take a bunch of virtual machines, create a network entirely in software between them. That almost has nothing to do with the physical network. It has a completely different set of addresses, and I can create these on the fly from a user interface. They're really simple. All the heavy lifting is done under the covers in the system over there. And these virtual networks, they can be deployed very rapidly. They can be built and toned down in a matter of minutes. It's very simple, and it's very powerful, just like virtualization could tear up or tear down an entire machine in seconds, literally. Uh, right. And that bringing that same power was the idea behind network virtualization. Bring that power to the application. We buy the simplicity argument. It's actually a great argument, uh, and it works very well, in fact. The problem with network virtualization has been, to this day, performance. You lose a lot of performance. So if you think in the traditional virtualization world, this is like going back to the 90s. If you wanted simplicity, you went with virtualization, but if you wanted performance, you went physical. Mm -hmm. And that's the same problem that seems to plague network virtualization today. And the reason why that happens is because the way NSX operates and how network virtualization is actually implemented. So if you have a virtual machine, and assume that this virtual machine is on a virtual network, that virtual machine sends a packet out. And this is a regular Ethernet packet. That's the same packet that goes on a physical network, a full layer two Ethernet packet. But to do network virtualization, what then happens is that packet is made as the payload of a bigger packet. Basically, you take this packet and put it inside a larger one. And the larger packet has its own IP header, own UDP header, own frame. So it's encapsulated, like it's a GRE it, tunnel, essentially. Exactly, it is encapsulated. VXLAN is the other uh, encapsulation mechanism like GRE, and there is STT, which is the third. All three techniques for network virtualization we have today all rely on tunneling. Now, the problem with tunneling is, simply put, performance. Making this copy 
in order to do the encapsulation in software is very, very expensive. It works fine at one gigabit line rate, but if you go to 10 gigabit, you get between 50 and 60% overhead. If you go to 40 gigabit, you get between 80 and 90% overhead. Wow. System simply doesn't scale. And you're also increasing the size of all your packets. packets. Yeah. And the network system, in fact, will chop the packet because it will not be able to transmit the larger packet. And then that fragmentation leads to decreased performance. Decreased performance again, because I got to wait for both parts of the fragment to join them back together before I can deliver anything upstream. So it is this that eventually robs the system of performance. So about three years ago, uh, what we did, uh, essentially, is look at this problem and say, why are we doing encapsulation at layer two? Network virtualization should not even have been done at that layer. It should have been done at layer three. The simple way of looking at it is, I'm trying to create a virtual network, a virtual IPv4 network, and my physical network is already IPv4. So I should be able to translate from one to the other. Instead of treating the underlying network as a dial-up modem and encapsulating everything to send it through that. Mm -hmm. And therein lies the crux of our technology. Okay. So we do our network virtualization at layer three. So we make minor modifications to the header of the IP packet, particularly in the source and destination addresses. And what this gives us is the same capabilities of network virtualization that you get with NSX, but without any of the performance loss. Very nice. So the, the size of the packets don't change. They remain exactly the same. There's no fragmentation. There's no fragmentation. They're fully interoperable with your existing routers, if you so choose, as well. And that is one of its biggest strengths. That is, packets look no different. Um, the second part of it is complete line rate performance. We operate at 1 gig on 1 gig networks, 10 gig on 10 gig networks, 40 gig on 40 gig networks, and shortly 100 gig on 100 gig networks. The other advantage of this thing is, you no longer have to deal with, if I want performance, I go to physical, and if I want simplicity, I go to virtual. The same virtual networking technology gives you performance of physical layer networks. What this lets us do now is deploy virtual networking everywhere. So we don't just use virtual networking to cobble together applications. We even use virtual networking to talk to storage, oh. which if you did today, at four gigabits per second overhead, you're not going to be able to get it with NSX. Right. Whereas with our technology, everything is virtualized. So complete network virtualization. Complete network virtualization in there. In fact, the simplest demo that we have in there is you can sit with a laptop on your wireless network and RDP into a Windows server, which happens to be virtualized, and the Windows server is running on a virtual network. And you cannot tell the difference between whether it's physical or virtual. The performance is exactly the same. The packets look exactly the same. And if you trapped the packets anywhere along the wire, they look exactly like any other networking system's packets. That's awesome. That's awesome. The third thing that we did in here is something uh, that, the, 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 that we provide inside the system. It's called micro-segmentation. And the idea is you should be able to create very small networks that are very tightly coupled to the application itself. So let's consider a three-tier application, web tier, app tier, database tier. Mm -hmm. App tier happens to be JBoss. You would ideally like to have your own network for the JBoss tier and only allow those security privileges that are needed for the JBoss application to run. So in terms of a firewall, only open those ports that the application needs, instead of generally opening all sorts of ports in there and then opening yourself up to attack. This allows you to do zone defense. Some people have called this application-defined networking. Exactly. Okay. And this is exactly what micro-segmentation is leading down to, application-defined networking, where each application puts its profile out of what it expects from the network and what it wants from a security perspective, and being able to deliver on that directly at the network layer. That is another thing that we do very well in, uh, in Aeon. Uh, which is our adaptive overlay network, network virtualization technique. Lastly, networks also have a lot of services. Just setting up the network is probably the first step of a long journey. Right. Uh, you set the network up, and after that, all these microservices are needed. You need DHCP servers, typically, to even get addresses on the network. Uh, you need NAT. You may need firewall profiles. You may need load balancers. One of the nice things with uh, our implementation in Ignite is all of the microservices are built in. So when you deploy a network, you can just check a box and say, give me a DHCP server. Here is an address range. Check a box and say, deploy a firewall on this entire network. Any VM that runs in there has a firewall automatically running under it. And this is the profile I want. So now, if I take the earlier example of JBoss, I could only open those ports that are needed for JBoss. And it doesn't matter where that VM runs, on which hypervisor. Under the VM, because it belonged to that particular network that had a security profile, only those rules and those ports are open that are needed by that particular application to run. So the virtualization admin or application owner doesn't have to fill out a form or give the network you know, group a list of all the different services and firewall ports exactly. he needs open. He can essentially do it himself. That's correct. In it's a GUI interface. Self -service. Yeah, self-service network 
configuration. configuration. Yeah. And yet the underlying physical network that is managed by network administrators does not see this complexity and they can define their security policies independent of what the applications are that are being deployed on there. So now, if you look at it from a management perspective, it's much easier for them to build a network at the physical layer that serves the needs of everybody and let network virtualization take care of specialization of needs. And the best person who knows about the application is the application owner. That's right. And they can specify the rules themselves without having to ever drop to the physical layer. So what kind of application services would you be able to deploy? You said DHCP, what So else? we deploy DHCP, we deploy network address translation, where you can specify what, what your input is and what your output is. You can specify distributed firewalls. Uh, no single choke point in their firewalls run everywhere where a VM runs that belongs to a particular network. Uh, load balancers. Uh, and in load balance networks, when new virtual machines come into the network, they automatically get added to the load balancer and expand the pool. So it's not another manual element you have to configure. It's all these little things that make a big difference in managing what a network is today. Right, right. And what if I clone that virtual machine or that group of virtual machines? Does do those application services follow the clone? The application services would follow the clone because a template gets built out of it that defines what all the components are over there, and that is that system follows through. Very nice. Real software-defined networking. Complete software-defined networking. Excellent. So what are some of the other benefits here? So the main business benefits, if you look at it in, um, from network virtualization's perspective or even virtualization's perspective in that sense, is simplicity, just operational simplicity. Deploying physical networks with a series of services can take uh, in very agile places in the matter of days to weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, in most companies that have to go through a series of policies, this takes months to deploy. As opposed to that, it takes minutes. It is right. that sheer agility of being able to deploy a network in a span of seconds to minutes uh, that makes this very simple and very powerful. And if you make a mistake, your physical network connectivity still continues. You can always destroy the virtual network and reconfigure it. It has no impact on general connectivity. So a tremendous simplicity, efficiency, really not just for the uh, network administrator, but also for the application owner, um, greater agility for the business. They can deploy their new applications faster, get them That's up right. and running, uh, and, and security. Those applications are secure. That's correct. And then uh, performance. So the applications are going to perform with these uh, network services at, at high speeds. That's correct. They're going to operate pretty much at line rate. Were you to take the entire system and deploy it in the physical world, you would see no performance benefits out of that exercise. Uh, and you would be giving up all the simplicity uh, elements in there. And that is what is nice about it. We have line rate performance, whether you're virtual or physical, and it operates exactly the same. In fact, uh, our current SDN routers that we deploy, they, op they do network virtualization at one and a half terabits per second. Awesome, awesome. So for people who want to learn more, I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what Cloud S6 network virtualization can do. What do you recommend? So I'd recommend uh, take a look at our uh, website, okay. uh, cloudistics.com slash demo. You can get a demo, a demo schedule or even get access to our hardware in a virtual lab where you can deploy your own networks and see, see it how, how it operates. Very nice. Well, thank you very much, Dr. V. Thanks, David. For more information, visit cloudistics.com slash demo.